What's up, everybody? Welcome back to This Week in Lacrosse. And you know what? This week, we're just going to get right into it because there's too much news to worry about an intro. So we're starting off this week because a pretty monumental achievement happened, and it happened on two different coasts. Last week, it was Kevin Groninger from St. Margaret's Episcopal and Canyon Birch from Mansaquan High School out of New Jersey that both set program and state records by scoring the most points in their careers. What's impressive about Birch's performance is he became the first player in New Jersey history to score 500 career points, which when you think about it, I have records going back to New Jersey dating to the 70s. So for a player to be the first out of a state that has that much history, it just goes to show you how impressive his career has been. And he's not even done yet. There's still a few games left in the regular season, and he probably still has a pretty decent playoff run, just judging by last year's team. So he could really put that number up there. And who knows? I mean, that's one of those things, considering how long it's taken someone to get to 500 points in New Jersey. I'm not sure if that record will ever be broken. I want to know what you think. Do you think anybody's ever going to break that record? Leave that in the comments below. Now, within 24 hours on the opposite coast, on the West Coast, Kevin Groninger of St. Margaret's Episcopal became the first player in California history to score 400 career points. Now, it's another impressive feat because I, while California doesn't have a lacrosse history quite like New Jersey, there has been a monumental level of talent to come out of California over the last 10, 15 years. And for him to be the first player in state history to score 100, 400 career points is an impressive feat. What's even more impressive is that not only did he do it for a team that went on to win its Orange County Championship, but they also went on to win their first Southern Section Championship since 2015. So it was him, and I have to give a shout out to Stu Pollard, their faceoff guy, who had a monumental playoff run for the Tartans that led them to two championships this year because anybody who knows um, California they don't do a state championship they do the section championships what they call CIF and so they don't play for a state title but St. Margaret's Episcopal got to play for in Orange County and then they got to play for the Southern Section Championship which took on the LA County champion Loyola Los Angeles. Now it was championship weekend this weekend because we had championships across the country. We had Florida, we had Texas both crowned state champions this weekend, we had Alabama, we had champions in California, there was a new IAC champion in Maryland. I mean it was just a busy, busy weekend. So we're going to kind of do a quick rundown of some of the championship games now. All right, as I mentioned earlier, St. Margaret's Episcopal won their first Southern Section Championship since 2015. Stu Pollard, their face-off guy who I mentioned earlier, he went 16 for 16 against Loyola Los Angeles. And Kevin Groninger had four goals and three assists. So it was definitely a team effort. Congratulations to the Tartans on winning their first Southern Section Championship since 2015. All right, sticking in California, St. Ignatius Prep won the WCAL Championship. They won that with an 8-6 win over Sacred Heart Prep. Also in the last week, Duke City Lacrosse Club out of New Mexico won its third straight state championship with a 7-6 win over Santa Fe Prep. Coach Matt Montoya has led the team to a 41-game winning streak. So congratulations to the Scorpions on their championship and on their winning streak. Bullis won its second straight IAC championship with a 13-9 win over St. Stephen St. Agnes. Coach Jeff Balestri has led the Bulldogs to three IAC championships in the last four years. In Texas, it was pretty impressive because Episcopal School of Dallas, they had a new head coach this season, Coach Jay Southern. Well, they faced longtime rival Highland Park in the THSLL Championship. Yes, I have to pause and say that one. Um, but they defeated Highland Park 9-6 to win the Division I title in Coach Jay Southern's first season. He had Drew Westerman, who earned the overall MVP with three goals and assists. It was his second goal of the game that tied the game at four. And you had Jack Loftus, who was the offensive MVP in the game. He scored the goal that put them up five to four and really was the goal that made sure ESD never trailed again. This was one of those back and forth affairs. Team, The score was tied and it wasn't. Highland Park was ahead early, and then ESD really pulled away late to win the Division I championship. In the Division II championship, a big congratulations to the Prosper Eagles, who won it over Smithson Valley. But now I want to get to the big one. Ponte Vedra out of Florida is no stranger to the state Final Four. They have reached the Final Four seven times in the last ten years, and they only reached the final one time, and that was in 2016 when they faced St. Thomas Aquinas. 
Now, it's one of those things, for those of you probably my age, you may remember the Atlanta Braves in Major League Baseball, and they were one of those teams that always seemed to be able to get to the game, were always an elite level team, and never seemed to win it. And finally, they did. And I'm glad to say this year it was Ponte Vedra and Coach Tom West's year to finally hoist the crown. And I really have to say, it's one of those things, they beat St. Thomas Aquinas 19-7. to Yes, I have to say it again, 19-7. to This was not only one of the more impressive state championship games I think I've seen score-wise, you just generally don't see that kind of blowout and since this level of competition. Ponte Vedra has been one of those teams all year that has really challenged themselves. They went out of state. They played a lot of programs that they traditionally don't play. Earlier this season, I got to talk with their face-off man, Jimmy Burns, and they went to the King of Spring in North Carolina where they played three games in three days. And he said that was really helping prepare them mentally and physically for this kind of grind. And it really paid off. Dylan Hess, who's a Georgetown commit, scored five goals and four assists to lead the Sharks in this game. And like I said, this is Coach Tom West and Ponte Vedra's first state championship. They're only the second public school in Florida history to ever win a state title. And what's also interesting out of Florida is that for years, we were dominated by a St. Andrews and a Lake Highland Prep, two private schools. They pretty much, you could pencil them in as one of the state champions year in, year out. For years, it was St. Andrews. You could just take the Sharpie and put them in at the beginning of the year because you knew they were going to win it. Lake Highland Prep really stepped up. I think they won three straight there for a while, and then they won four out of five years. And then something changed. We had some head coaching changes, but I think the parity in the state really started to expand because we got St. Thomas Aquinas. They won back-to-back -back in 2015 and 2016. Then in 2018, when Jupiter won it all, that was the first public school program to ever win a state championship. What makes all that interesting? So after years and years of basically having these same couple champions or being able to pencil in one or two schools at the start of the year, we've had three different champions in three different years. I really think that's starting to speak to the growth of the game in Florida. Now, if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about the Florida playoff system and how that might be changing, you can tune into last week's podcast, which I'll link below, where I talked with Lee Roggenberg from Florida Lacrosse News. He talks about the potential of the state splitting into two divisions, so going to um, 1A, 2A, or big schools, small schools, however you want to look at it, however they'll end up deciding and splitting it up. But is that a good idea? Is that going to be one of those things that is going to stunt the growth of the sport in the state, or should they just leave it alone and let it go how it is? If you're a Florida lacrosse fan, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the potential playoff format going forward in the comments below. All right, I'm going to do a couple quick hitters here, and then we're going to get out because I know you guys want to watch plays of the week. Chaminade out of New York lost its first game of the year because Del Barton out of New Jersey beat them 12-9. to The second longest winning streak in the country is now over with Hopticon out of New Hampshire. Their 43-game winning streak ended with a 9-5 loss to Pelham. Ocean City out of New Jersey, their head coach Joe Latore got his 100th win of his career. And I want to wrap it up with Highlands Ranch. Now, anybody who follows the news know that Highlands Ranch has been in the news for all the wrong reasons this season, but I want to give a little bit of positivity about this school. The Falcons entered the Colorado State playoffs as the number 10 seed, but they upset number 2 seed Arapaho 8-7, to reach the Class 5A Final Four. They're going to play number three seed Cherry Creek. So this is definitely one of those feel-good stories. So I think probably a lot of people are pulling for Highlands Ranch. They have quite a mountain to climb, no pun intended for the Colorado fans, but if they got past Cherry Creek, more than likely they'd have to take on number one seed Valor Christian, who has been the number one seed and probably the number one team in the state all year and have an undefeated record. So it's going to be interesting to watch. That champion happens at the end of this week on Saturday. That was the news for this week. There was a lot to encapsulate, and I'm sure we're going to have that for at least another few weeks as different states wrap up their state tournaments. But right now, we're going to get the plays of the week. Keep your eye on number nine. This is Canyon Birch from Mansaquan High School, courtesy of Brandon Gould from NJ.com. This is goal 363 of his career, which breaks the state record and makes Canyon the number one player all time in New Jersey state history. It's a pretty monumental achievement considering how long lacrosse has been played in New Jersey. Congratulations, Canyon. All right, we got a pretty impressive playoff goal here from Paige Men's Lacrosse. We got Eric Holden, unreal assist. It's not even in frame, see it again. 
This was the game-winning goal to Andrew English. Here's another look. You can see he gets pushed down, the assist, and of course the crowd and the team goes wild. The team advances to the third round of the North Carolina playoffs. Way to go, guys. This one's out of Colorado. This is Jake Taylor, a senior at Notre Dame commit. On his knees, behind the back. Did you see it? One more time, on his knees, from front of the net, behind his back, against the Rapaho High School out of Colorado. All right, that does it for another week, everybody. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate it so much. If you haven't already, please don't forget that subscribe button. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And if you liked it, you might like one of the other videos that you can check out right here. Everybody, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week.